<laughs> you know, it's, it's so funny. Like, you had him the first day. You had him the second day. What is he going to say tomorrow? It's like it's not getting creative. It's the same introduction. <laughs> Wow. So here's what we're going to do something interesting. Uh, I just felt as we had a conversation that we need to sort of slow down a bit and process. So what I want us to do is to have a small conversation. Uh, I'm glad you, well, here's what I want you to do. I want you to talk about two things. The first one is, what has God, what, what's the thing that God has done so far that has most grabbed your attention in the last two days? And then number two is, what's one question if you were to have a one-on-one -on -one with me, that you'd be like, Pastor M, this is a question I have. So I want you to actually find someone uh, that you can have this conversation, preferably not the person next to you who's your really good buddy, but just find somebody maybe from another campus and just have th those two questions. So the first one is, what's something God has said that has really grabbed my attention? And number two is, what's one question I still have that I'd love to ask? So let's do that for the next few minutes. Actually, For those just joining us, we're discussing two, th two questions. The first question is, what is something you've heard God say uh, in this process? Uh, something that you've heard God say in the last two days that really has grabbed your attention. And then the second question is, what is one question you have? For those of you who are online, feel free to write your question. And uh, we'll make sure our administrator gets it to me and we can answer those as well. So uh, f write those on the chat after you've had a discussion.
for the guys on the cameras, don't turn off the, the picture. Let the guys on YouTube see what's happening as well. Yeah.
Okay, just a couple more minutes, and uh, I'll need a couple of guys with mics that can be roving mics for me. Okay. I have my mic assistants. <laughs> awesome. Um, let me invite you guys to take your seats. Or, yeah, just let the person say, talking just summarize and let's take our seats. I think I have two assistants. I've have Seth on this side. I have somebody on that side. Oh, fantastic! Okay, excellent. So, I guess uh, the two questions were: What is one thing that you had God saying, or you've ha or you've experienced that has really, really caught your attention? And then number two: What's one question that you, if you had a chance, you would ask? So, I'd like us to actually just do a bit of a town hall, a bit of a conversation about that. Uh, this afternoon, I just felt impressed not to teach. I already had a message, but I was like, I just felt it's better for us to process. Uh, sometimes it's good to just make sure you're not leaving people behind, that we're walking at the same speed. And I think we also learn together when we all share. So uh, I've got two guys with mics, and so I can already see a hand there even before I ask the question and a hand here. You guys are so sharp. Mabu Nights, I love this church. So okay, so basically what I'm asking is, yeah, maybe something you had or something you had, uh, for yourself, but a, either a question or a comment on what God has done so far. It could be a testimony or a comment, uh, but yeah, just briefly. So let's start there. Say your name and uh, what campus you're from and then just share. Good afternoon, church. Good afternoon. Hey. Um, my name is Bob Collins, okay, o Obora. <laughs> 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 Someone um, offered him a bottle of water, that's why you're <laughs> laughing. I am from the Lifeway campus. Hey. I get pastored by this amazing man of God, Pastor Godi. Mm -hmm. And um, <laughs> today, one thing that has caught my attention is that I've been mark timing when it comes to serving. And today was more of an affirmation that I need to be discipling kids. And <laughs> Love it. Love it. because it's, um, I think their daughter already abandoned them for me. <laughs> and uh, various kids in um, the church, um, Phoebe's child, who's always constantly asking about me. So Phoebe today was just like, listen to the spirit. You need to disciple these kids. You need to take up that mantle that Pastor Jane um, left that space for kids, Mavuno kids wow. in Lifeway. Wow. So, yes, I, I am your new pastor for kids. Oh! <laughs> 
<laughs> Amen. <laughs> that is so good. So good. Wow. That's the Lord speaking for sure. Like, yeah, Pastor, the life we had, the, the campus pastor, I mean, the children's pastor just had to move. And so that's just God. That's how God moves, man. I love it. I love uh, it. Because okay. when Teacher Jane was leaving, she, when PP, uh, there's this program we do, PPI, that uh, we mentor kids at Marion. So the first day she was like, usually have some free days on Friday. Yes. So I was like, yes. Would you mind coming and helping? I was like, okay. Went for the first Friday. It was good. The next one, she was like, do you like to take up a role? Act. I was like, okay, cool. Next, she was like, do you mind writing for us the um, play? I was like, cool. Wrote for like two Fridays, and then she was like, um, by the way, na bounce. See, PPI, it's yours. <laughs> and... Called I, discipleship. Yes. <laughs> I took it up and I've been working with Pastor Godi towards it. And it's one of the most amazing things I've felt with the kids there. When you talk to those kids, I call them my kids right now. And the fact that tomorrow I'm not going to see them, it's a bit of. Uh, <laughs> wow. So, um, I'm stopping this thing of. Because I'll be accountable as you gave us the word yesterday that if you don't do it, God will ask you, okay, there were these kids who needed you, yeah. who needed your help, who needed your counseling, and you dilly-dallied, and we lost some of them. Yeah. I don't want to have blood on my hands. Amen. I want to have saved souls. Thank Part you. of my crown. Amen. Thank you. Awesome. Wow. That is so awesome. Amen. Amen. Okay. Uh, my name is uh, Timothy Kaburu, um, a, a pastor at Mavuno Church, Lovington. Um, so I'm speaking this because I'm also, I'm speaking to my wife because I know she's currently tuning in. <laughs> and uh, after every session, we are debriefing. I'm, I'm actually doing that. So wow. uh, you'll get to understand why I'm saying that. And uh, one boy will uh, collaborate what I'm saying so that it doesn't look like. Um, I'm coping what he said. <laughs> so the coping is fine. Coping is fine. Okay, yeah, actually, we're allowed to copy. Yeah? We copy all the time. Yeah, yeah, creativity is overrated, yeah. So the first thing originality I'll say, is overrated. Originality, sorry, yeah. is overrated, yes. So the first thing is uh, I've had, um, when Pastor M was sharing, questions that I was having in terms of, um, I know the questions people would ask because I'm in charge of uh, discipleship. And so we were even talking and asking, so what's the difference between a life group and a discipleship group? Mm. And I love that there's one a recording, but also a PowerPoint presentation that I don't need to invent anything. Uh, mm. So when I'm having conversations uh, with life group, there are two life group leaders I'm scheduled to have conversations with, and I know that's the question will come up, so what's the difference? So I have, that, that's done for me. And so I thank Pastor M for Amen. doing the heavy lifting for us. Yeah. yeah. Amen. Amen. Then uh, the, the, the other thing which I felt God speaking to me in relation to what he said, uh, where I currently live, um, we, we are on this flat, it has five floors and about each floor has about maybe 15 homes. And so every day, especially um, on Mondays when we are free at home, the, at times in the evening when the kids come from school, they run around, there's noise. So I remember there's a time I was I'm even telling my wife, what do we need to do with these kids? They are too noisy. And I'm, I'm trying here to concentrate, maybe to uh, just sleep in, and they are running around. But today, as we were, as Pastor M was sharing, something came into my mind. I was like, I think I've had a wrong attitude towards what needs to be done. And I was like, uh, my kids are growing now. I have two twin daughters. They are about two. They are two years and two months. Salongo. Yes, thank you. Um, and there's a day they were standing and just looking out outside the window and seeing the kids play. And some of them stopped and they started talking to them. And I, at some point I became concerned, like, hey, okay, so uh, my kids, who are these guys? They're going to be influenced how? But then, as today, as Pastor M was talking, I was like, but I haven't, there's something I can do about this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
And even as we were talking with the boy, she even told me, because I was thinking, okay, there's a long holiday coming. For about eight weeks, kids will be home, so it's going to get crazy. <laughs> uh, but she told me, instead of even waiting for that, why can't we? So I was like, I need to do something. Bring these kids together. There's already content, content curated for us. Find a space. I was even thinking of calling the landlord and getting one of the homes that's not still occupied. Mm. And we disciple these kids. Wow. At times I even think, even for selfish reasons, yeah. I have something to gain. Because one day, my kids, when they're around three years, if you're going to still stay there, they'll need to go out and play. <laughs> but if I'm able to shape these kids, then I'll not be concerned. I'm like, yeah, go play with them because I know God is doing something in their lives. And so I feel secure by allowing you to go and play with them. And I know if I do that, even, even, even I, when I talk to the parents, there'll be an opportunity to engage them and they'll see the value and they're like, okay, you can go. Be there for maybe an hour or two with the kids watching the Mavuno kids video, uh, having crafts with them, uh, sharing with them some snacks and then send them home. Oh. So for okay. me, that's something I'm okay. taking out of today's session. And I know I'm in agreement with my wife because I'm not a kiddie person, so I'm not like you, but my wife, uh, she's, uh, she's very gifted with children. Those of, those of who have interacted with her know she's very gifted with children, so I know this is something that will come very naturally for her. So mine is to support her and just maybe put the systems and we get rolling. I love it. I love it. So good. So good. I can see a discipleship group starting a community in that area that will become a missional community because the parents of those children will want what you're giving their kids. Yeah, praise God. That's so exciting. All right. Ministries are being born. That's what's happening right now. Ministries are being born. Destinies are being changed. Yep, go ahead. Uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon. So I'm um, Oliver J. Kamush. And, <laughs> of course... <laughs> It is something I've thought to share uh, inside me, but I uh, thought, let me take the bold step. Are you from Mashariki? I'm from Mashariki, awesome. from Super 30. Uh, so last year we, we visited Pastor Mills at the home and uh, we had a very long conversation with Pastor Mills. And Pastor Mills plan, uh, shared with me the idea of uh, planting a church in Babadogo. I come from Babadogo. And it's, a sl uh, it's an area that is mostly slum, surrounded by Korogosho, Ngomongo, and uh, those big, big slums around uh, those areas. And I've always had passion for young people in that space because uh, I have grown up in that space and it is mm -hmm. a space full of darkness. Yeah. Uh, I've had friends who've died. I've had friends who are lost in drugs, others in jail and all that. And God saved me when I was young and saved me from all this. Amen. And like my story would have been so different if God hadn't intervened. And so I'd always thought of going back and reaching out to them. And it's something I have done informally. I've done one-on-one -on -one evangelism with friends and all that. I've had people meeting at our home back uh, in the day, but it wasn't really structured. I didn't have a way forward. Like, I'd go talk to someone, someone give their life to Christ, and then what? I leave them because I don't have a way forward. Yeah. And but when Pastor Mills shared, and then uh, we met also at Mashariki, and he commissioned us to go and plant that church, I didn't have a way forward. Um, I had my own creative way because I had started a creative organization for creatives uh, where I would meet, meet and share art. But God literally submitted my vision to, to whatever Pastor Mills was sharing. And as you're speaking about the discipleship uh, thing and the root, I literally, ha I have that in the, I wish I had the notebook. I got that way, way back. I drew them exactly as you're sh sharing them. And you were speaking and I was like, God, you are really funny. Like, you can't, you can't, you can't do that. The, from 
you are talking about community transformation. I'm like, I was thinking about that. You're talking about, uh, because in the ghetto we are so used to handouts, but not giving, let's not be people who are being given, but people who actually work with the resources we have to actually build. And I'm like, I was thinking about that. You're talking about uh, creating communities that grow and outgrow. And I'm like, that's my plan. That's actually what God was speaking. And for me, I am grateful. And I, moving from here, the first thing I'm going, because I already have people on the ground, people wow. who actually who work with me. It's just now going and actually, guys, we are not just doing this, we won't do though. We are actually, we are, this is actually, a, uh, it's a, this is how it's going to work. And for me, uh, it's done. Amen. <laughs> what? Ministries are being born, churches are being planted in the house. Bless God for you, Oli. Yeah. Hi. I, I think, uh, let's go this side so we take turns. Yeah, so. Hi. Hi. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. My name is Jackson from Hill City. Come on, Hill City. <laughs> and I have a question. Yeah. And to put it into context, I am leading one of the newest uh, DGs in town. And half of the group are in the house. Thank you for allowing us an opportunity to bring our members. So when you say half, bit, half the DGs in the house, you yes, mean it's your family? They are here. Oh, are in the house here? Okay. Here. All right, all right. They are here. Awesome. And I, I, I also belong to a life group where we've been very cozy, as most of you have been. <laughs> <laughs> and my question is, how can we accelerate everyone yeah. to get to where we want them to be? Because I think the risk that we face is the newer people might easily, you know, overtake and leave the older people behind. Yeah. Yeah. And we will have a situation, yeah? <laughs> um, one of uh, my friends that we were sharing with uh, in the group also brought in some very interesting perspective to this conversation. Uh, you know the ACT model that we are following in the morning? Yeah. Um, and the question, which I'll combine with my question, the question that he had is, how can we like sort of have a template that we download to everyone? The same way we are able to accelerate everyone in prayer, we are teaching everyone to play in a certain model, that we are also able to do all these other things so that we move in tandem. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Wow, I love it. I really like that. So okay, so what I'll do is I'll just note the questions and then we'll answer them at the end. But those are really good questions. Yeah, those are really good questions. And I think your assistant's girl, that's assistant's girl who thinks like that. How do we accelerate and make sure everybody has the same content? Love it. All right. I think there was somebody who had started speaking. Uh, I think the, was it, was it you? I think it was the lady, then, then we can do you. Yeah. Hi, guys. Hi. I'm Millie from Mavuno Donhom and I'm Mavuno Mashariki come and I'm Pastor Milton. Oh, come on. And Woo. Pastor Andrew Kemboi. Oh, yeah. Hey, hey. <laughs> and just so we are clear, Mashariki, Cinema Babi. Let's just get that open. <laughs> Mashariki as a campus. Um, just translate that into, <laughs> into, into English for the non Kenyans. Oh, we, are just, uh, we have chicken in and pizza in as our neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, All right, that translates. <laughs> I think for me, the one thing that, that has really been bothering me has been understanding discipleship. For me, I felt discipleship is about, you know, you really know your Bible so well. You probably know how to speak in tongues. You have, you have identified your gifts. During the, should be last Sunday, but one sermon that we had from Pastor M in church, I actually told, uh, Pastor Drew has formed us into disciple groups based on where we live. And I actually told Kare, I really don't think I want to disciple anyone. Because mm. I feel it's, I felt it's too complex. It's too hard. Um, but from yesterday, the one thing that has to doubt is um, for me to be efficient in being a disciple is also through prayer. Yeah. Prayer is the one thing that really stands out. 
Do I struggle praying at times? Yes. Why? Like you said yesterday, at times it's because of heart. At times, it's because you have wounds. Mm. Yeah. Mm. I told Vio a while back mm. I really need to to let go of my wounds. Yeah. Because each and every time we are holding on to these wounds. It's yeah. why when Pastor Drew tells me, Millie, I need you to lead prayers in the morning, I'm like, mm -hmm. first person, no, wait. Like, Millie, you know, your commission to do greater things. I'm like, no, person, no, I can't do this. Yeah. Yeah. So from yesterday, Pastor M, the one thing that I'm grateful about is knowing that I am qualified. Amen. 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 I love it. Yeah. I don't have to be looking. I mean, I, I look at some of the things that my friends do. In my heart, I know what they're doing is wrong. In my heart, I know that their thinking is so wrong. Yeah. But I don't want to say anything because I know they're going to judge me. They're going to argue. They're going to say stuff. But in my, and then I go back home and then I'm in pain. I'm like, why didn't I say something? Yeah. Like you say, that was an opportunity for me to ask, why are you saying that? But because... As Millie, I feel, eh, hey, but I'm just Millie. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just Millie. That's who I am. Mm -hmm. So the one thing that I am assured of is that I am qualified. Amen. The in and Amen. out, I need to Amen. work on the out. I scored a three out of ten. Guys, da? <laughs> <laughs> a three out of ten. <laughs> I need to reach out to my friends. Mm -hmm. If I know what they're doing, it's wrong. I mean, Pastor M said, my business is to pray for you. Whether you get healed or not, I, I me, I've Amen. already told God, God, Amen. I need you to do this. Amen. So me, I'm Amen. going to tell you, what you're doing is wrong. You need to follow this and this. If you choose not to do it, that's up to you. I've yes. already done my part. But the greatest takeout from yesterday until today is that I am qualified. Amen. That is all I know. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Millie. Thank you, Millie. You are. You are. And you are loved greatly. You really are. I just, that's, that's, that's a God moment right there, guys. Let me just ask, if you're here and you've struggled with pain, just you are hurt by a parent, you're hurt by a pastor, by a church, and it's held you back from serving. Um, Millie, just stay standing because I want to pray for you. But I'm going to ask you to just join Millie right now. Just stand up on your feet because I believe that the power of God is here to release us. Huh? We don't want to be slaves to our past. We don't want to be slaves to what people said, to what was done, to words that were spoken. If you know I'm speaking about you, just shoot up to your feet right now. This is not about, you're not here to impress people. You're here to receive God's healing. Bless God. Let's appreciate them as they stand up right now. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. Bless you, Lord. And I'm going to ask as they stand, brothers and sisters, if you're near, just, just, just come, come close and just raise a hand towards them. If you're a sister and there's a sister there, you can lay a hand on them. And let's just... If you're a brother, just lay a hand on a brother there, and let's just, let's agree together that right now, the, the balm of G Gilead is being released in this house. The healing balm of Gilead is being released, that you're being freed from your past. Right now, the Lord is bringing that pain that you went through into your consciousness, and you're feeling it. You're remembering what was done, and this is the last time this pain will define you. I'm speaking over you right now. Even as we are praying, this is the last time that pain will define you. Come on, just have faith on their behalf. Just begin to speak right now that the Lord is just lifting that pain. You will no longer be a captive of your past. This is not, this is not God's will for you. You will no longer wallow in pain. You will no longer be hesitant to serve your heavenly Father. The, the sinfulness of human fathers will not keep you from seeing the beauty of your, of your heavenly Father. Bless the Lord. Come on, if you're sitting down, you can still pray. You can still stretch out your hand and pray. We're all active warriors here. We're prayer warriors. We speak out and we believe that strongholds are coming tumbling down right now by faith as we raise our voices on behalf of our brothers and sisters. That right now, strongholds are coming tumbling down. Come on, let it go. If you're being prayed for right now, let it go. Don't let this thing define you. 
It's the devil's way of keeping you justified. It's the devil's way of keeping you feeling that you have a case. Listen, let it go. Your father is your judge. Let the father be the one who judges that person. But for you, you will serve the Lord. But for you, you will serve unreserved. Oh, come on, somebody. We bless the Lord that you're here, Lord. Thank you that you're lifting up. You're lifting up. You're lifting up. You're breaking strongholds. You're shattering chains. You're keeping your people moving forward. Thank you that there are many millies in this house right now who are being lifted up. That they're understanding that they're qualified by their God. That their past does not hold them back. We bless you, Jesus. Oh, come on, Lord. We just, come on, people. We're just presenting it to the Lord. Present it to the Lord. Ah, and as you pray, you know, you might even know somebody who's not here, who's in that situation. Lift them up. Lift up their voice before the Lord. We're in the holy place of the Most High. And the Lord is hearing our prayers. We bless you, Jesus. We bless you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. You've heard our prayers, Lord. We bless you, Jesus. Father God, even as we stand with our sisters and our brothers, I just want to recognize that, yes, parents cause wounds. Leaders cause wounds because they are fallen. They should have known better, but they caused those wounds. That father who spoke to you that way should have known better. That pastor should have known better. And I want to just do something right now as a father in this house. I want to actually stand in the place of that father who hurt you, that mother who hurt you, and to just say, I'm so sorry. I'm so, so sorry that you went through that pain. I'm so sorry. No father should ever cause that pain. No leader should ever cause that pain on somebody God has given them in their family. I'm sorry. And I just ask that you would forgive. Forgive. I'm sorry you went through that pain. Maybe you've been waiting for this person to just show some sign of remorse and you're not getting that. But please forgive. Forgive them because they don't know what they're doing. Forgive us, fathers, for many times we don't know what we're doing. And just let it go. Just let it go. Those harsh words, they don't define you. They don't define you. And let me speak now in place of a father in your life and say to you, you will not be defined by the curses that were spoken over you. You will not be limited by those words. They will not keep you back. Bitterness is not your portion. I release you from every sting of the enemy. I pull out right now, I pull out the, the burning arrows, the darts of the enemy from your spirit. I pull them out right now in Jesus' name. That pain, I'm releasing you from it right now in Jesus' name. I'm speaking a cover over you right now. That the Holy Spirit is coming right now and He's removing those wounds and even disinfecting them in the name of Jesus. Some of them had festered and become bitterness. The Holy Spirit, the antiseptic of the Holy Spirit is coming into those wounds right now. And He's removing the sting, the pain of those wounds. He's removing it. The memory will still be there, but the memory will not define you. You will think about it without bitterness in Jesus' name. In fact, it will stop being something that you think limits you. It will become a ministry. It will become a platform for ministry for you. Because God is going to use you to bring many people to Himself as He releases you from this thing. And so I speak over you right now. I speak over you godly freedom. Father God, right now, fill, fill with your Holy Spirit. Every one of those, your children, replace bitterness with joy, with joy, with freedom. And Lord, I declare as a father right now, you will be great. You will do well. You are great. You will succeed. The Holy Spirit is in you. You are unstoppable. You will go far. You will live. You will not die. You will achieve God's purpose for your life. And you will be a much better parent yourself. Your children will be blessed because of you. You will not be one of those parents who curses your children. Because of you, other generations, other people will grow up with a great self-esteem. Because of you. And I speak this blessing over you right now. I release you with joy. You will testify about the joy of the Lord. You will sleep well. This memory will not bring you shame any longer. And I bless you right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, let's give the glory to the Lord right now. Bless you. Bless the Lord. Wow. Hey, listen, you're going to go so far. Some of the limits that you've been having in your life this, this, this few years behind, you're going to find yourself accelerating in your prayer life. 
Hey, listen, I'm talking to you, somebody. You're going to find yourself accelerating in your ministry. You'll be shocked about your love for God. Some things that held you back will no longer hold you back. Because the Holy Spirit is here and He has set you free. The Bible says, he who the Son sets free is completely free indeed. And we're trusting God for that. Amen. To God be the glory. Thank you, Millie, for ushering us into a Kairos moment. To God be the glory for you. Amen. All right. Wow. I love it. Okay, we still have some people who are going to share comments. See, we're flowing with the Holy Spirit. Yeah, we're just listening to Him. And then I'll pose us in the next few minutes and we'll go home. <laughs> All right. Praise God, church. Amen. Ben Waimani here. And uh, let me not start with a question. I'll go back to the gathering 2021. Yeah. And what really stood out for me was you told us to pick the same word and just take it to the rest. Like, una copy to, you just copy the word, the yeah. way you preached on Sunday, and to take it to the community. And I ran an initiative called Jukumulaku where we reach out to kids. And last year, after the gathering, there's a group of boys, you know, in ghetto, in Eastlands, everyone has a base. We call them Zabe. Yeah? If you've lived in Eastlands, you know, you, have, you must have a group of uh, my boys from Eastlands. So I have a group called Blue City. And we normally go to watch football together. I've also invited Pastor Henry has come. We've gone to watch football together. And then these guys are... Monday to Monday, they are on Mira. We call it Jabba. They are on Jabba every day. Yeah. For those who are, does Mira translate into cut? Cut. Yes. Okay. Right. H is silent, not cut. The meow. Now, <laughs> I know from Islam. We also know English. <laughs> 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 All right. So, we were watching Manchester game, and you know whatever Manchester has been doing lately. They win, they lose. They win, but that doesn't change the fact that we are fans of Manchester. So now, there are those guys, when, when their Jabba has reported, I'm trying to, <laughs> to translate. They are like, Uyo sasa nafanya nini? Cristiano is losing chances, he's old. And then we are like, okay, now, cool down. This is what we are going to do from next year. Now this year, I told them, if you ever complained about a Manchester player, we are going to the field to play. And this was the shameless audacity. I told them, starting January, we are going to do football every Sunday. Must, you must attend. And I told them, no drugs. On Sunday, it's a no drugs day. Come on. We are doing football. So when January came in, we were talking about Limitless. So we started. A group of them came, some of them didn't. And we started our football. And we call it Fitness in Christ. And these are guys who don't go to church. Even if you preach, even if you tell them, they can't. They are like, ah, ah, mimi kanisa, I can't. I can't go. So this was an awakening for me. I was like, I really need to take this scripture to these guys. Yeah. We started football. We've been doing football every Sunday after service. I take whatever preached, we've been preached for. We go to the football after fitness. We do sermon. And one thing really stood out for me you, was... You, you preach the sermon. Yes, yes, I preach the sermon. I love it. And Come on. on <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> What a wrong guy. Now, on the third week, on the third week of January, actually, not even third week, the fourth week, we went to Yemi's place. We had a worship hangout after the service, we went to Yemi's place, and then we normally start our football at four. I, I had forgotten I was supposed to be at the football match. And then they were like, hey, who is this guy? So they called me. They are like, we are, we are here. Where are you? You're the only person who's not here. The pastor so, is not in church. Yes, the pastor is not in church. <laughs> I felt like, now, God, 
atuachili we are not leaving this thing yeah. we are moving from now till wherever is going to lead us Amen. and this is my prayer that this year i told them if you if you've never step your feet out of nairobi this year we're going to do wonders so this month we are doing swimo the other month we are trying to look for badminton we start doing badminton and most of them have started even opening up they are actually redefining their purpose we talked about purpose someone came told me if i want to go back to school i want to go and study finance so if you get someone who can sponsor or do something me i'm ready i'm ready to go back to school and we decided that we'll be collecting offering and after we collect we we have a book yeah you remember the old churches where we used to write offerings yeah we write the collections and then month at the end of the month we go visit either children so we give back to the society that is our church it's called fitness in christ oh. and <laughs> this let me let me now ask my question <laughs> um should we disciple the unchurched and what are the dangers of discipling the unchurched oh, wow. because I, I, it's not easy it's not really easy some of them it's not even easy for them to open up on where they lost the track and uh, to me it's just picking up from where they are and just moving forward wow and for the last two days yesterday and today there is something that pastor milton told me on sunday and i'm standing here i know you're watching me there <laughs> hi pastor milton <laughs> so to the whatever question you asked me it's a yes oh. this is the year yes oh <laughs> i love it thank you ben oh my goodness yeah come on pastor mills oh my goodness Amen. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. I love this church, man. I love this church. Yeah. So good. So good. Okay, whatever Pastor Mills asked, it must have been big. <laughs> All right, do we have any any Yeah. Oh, you can you want to explain? <laughs> And then we'll go to you. Ben Waimani is a very gifted man. He is. And this man has been running uh, an activation for for kids. And he's been getting between 250 to 300 kids meeting where they do creative stuff, they do grooming for these children, but they go through the teachings for the MK. Uh, ben Wayman is also an MK teacher. Wow. So whatever they they teach uh, our kids he ensures it is taught to these kids. So he's running two denominations. So actually on Sunday I challenged him to make it a weekly engagement yeah. and make it a church, a kids church. And uh, I was just telling him there are people who do church planting through children. Yeah. And he can start a church planting movement under Mavuno for kids. Oof. Um because I was telling him uh, there is stadia yeah. uh, uh, that plant churches through kids. Zimzam in Zambia and Zimbabwe plant churches through kids. And I was telling him I wouldn't want to be like my mother's church where there is no next generation. Yeah. And I was telling him I can't do what he does. So I was just challenging him. Can we see a Jukumu Lako uh, run in not only Hamza, but can I see a Jukumu Lako in Barshosho? Uh, that's Kiambio. Can I see a Jukumu Lako in Donholm? Can I see uh, a Jukumu Lako in uh, Sinai? Um, and uh, I was just telling him, Doug la- runs several denominations. And I was telling him, I don't see Pastor Muraidi uh not being agreeable to having a denomination being run uh that just plants kids churches uh-huh. this is what he's saying yes to <laughs> 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 a 
Amen. 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 It will go well. Amen. It will go well. It's going to be so beautiful. Yeah. That's where Africa is. It's in the next generation. Yeah. That's going to be one of our most powerful movements right there, being born. And you can say, I was there when it was born. Like you were there when the yes was given, isn't it? Like it doesn't get better than this. Thank you, Ben. May the Lord just establish you. We'll commission you on Saturday. We'll pray a commissioning prayer over you. Yeah, and just send you out to do that. Bless God for you. Wow. All right, we had somebody over here. And then uh, do we have, we have, I want the guys with the mics only. So it's one, and then who else? You. And then that's it, huh? Okay. All right. Oh, and then there's the last one. Okay, sure. Go ahead. Hi, guys. Hi. My name is Jane from Lifeway. Lifeway. <laughs> Thank you. For me, it started in November when we came. I always liked serving in MK. But due to my fear, I would come in and I'd go and I'd, I'd come and leave. <laughs> yeah, yeah in and so out. I decided to like, when I came, I asked God, like, I want to be plugged in now. Like, yeah. I want to live again. And it happened. We even gave Jane the leave. So from then, let's say, like, I've been reading. Yeah. And it's been going well. I have a very amazing team. They are my team, so let me just call them my team. So for me, when I came here, I was like, God, I need more people to serve in MK. Like, I, we need more reverence. I didn't know, like, I just felt they had, like, I was praying for them, but I wasn't, like, really passionate about it. I was just there. So today when we came, I was like, God, please come through. And after we were done with that session, someone just came to me and told me, like, they came. And they were like, you know what, from Sunday, he'll be serving with you. And I was like... He did it. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Wow. Wow. Okay. <laughs> it's a question. So for me, I was to ask, if I was to get married, would you officiate my wedding? <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> that is called Biazo. <laughs> Taking it by force. Is there a man in your life right now? Apart from Jesus. <laughs> not yet. Yeah, not yet. I love your faith. I love your faith. According to your faith, let it be. Let it be. Yeah. God has seen your desire. It shall be. It will be. Yeah. I can't wait to see you in a wedding dress. <laughs> I'll answer the question when I'm answering the rest. Yeah, but that's, I'm, I'm impressed by your faith. That's amazing. I love it. Yeah. Okay, uh, my name's uh, Benedict, and uh, I'm from uh, Far East through Mashariki. I love it. Yes. <laughs> and for me, for me, I'm sold out for this discipleship. What I want you to help us is uh, just framing out the outcome. And because uh, for me, when I'm working with the consul I'm a consultant, I look for outcomes very well. And I usually say an outcome is as clear as gravity. <laughs> Gravity, when I tell you, go and jump, you will see it. Yeah. And it doesn't matter where you are. Because, uh, and I'm connecting it with what Ben Waimani said here. Because out there, we meet people who are unbelievers, who are not even Christians, and you will not go with them with the four things of spiritual growth or, uh, or culture shift or church growth. They won't buy that. That is like our internal code language here. But you can frame us to work with an outcome, which is, first of all, clear for us here, that I'm actually moving towards an outcome or even I'm going further away from an outcome. And also it's very clear for even people who are not in this circle 
That actually what he's speaking actually applies for our life. That one will help us because it will be our measure every day. So that it's relevant in either Mombasa, Mandera, Migori, or even Munich, Madrid, or Milwaukee. Like it is clear as gravity, because their gravity is there. Yes, so that is my ask, my question okay. for you and also for all these people because uh, we crowdsource uh, oh, answers. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Wow. Honestly, yeah. we know English. <laughs> I think Mashariki guys are showing off now. Uh, <laughs> all right, we had one more and it's over there. Hi, Mavuno. Hi. I'm Jambo. Hi, Jambo. Uh, my name is Matthew Tuikong. I lately I'm um, Mavuno online most of the time because I re relocated from Hill City to Eldred. So I'm based in Eldred at the moment. And uh, I'm really glad I was here two weeks ago Amen. because that's when I heard about the gathering. It's been a while since I attended either the gathering or any of the other meetings of the leaders. And for me, it is really exciting. Um, my take out was the relationship triangle. Hmm. Uh, it really hit me. You know, uh, when Jesus was talking about love and saying love God with everything, you know, up, then, hey, someone has just seen me on the internet, I think. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so they are calling. <laughs> eh? It works. People are online. <laughs> uh, so, you know, love God with everything. Up. Yeah. Eh? Then in the relationship with the people we are together in Mavuno and the other churches we are working in. Yeah. But I realized that the out the evangelism has not been as much in my life. Even though I may sit in a matatu sometime and tell the guy, hey, do you know Jesus? And we chat or online and we talk with the people and we get one or two answers. So the toolkit past time you're giving us is really helpful. Mm. Now for me the question that is the issue that I would, I would I had asked Pascal him, um, you see, church wounds is beginning to become a significant challenge, mm. especially when we're evangelizing the new generation. There are people who in our country and maybe elsewhere believe that Christianity was a wash wash. And they believe that. That the Bible a scheme. Uh, is a scheme. A con to exchange land or our resources for something. But that is not true. So they have all these other excuses that they cannot take the word of God because they have a problem with the questions that everybody has raised. For instance, uh, when the church protested from the Catholics, there was a list of things people protested. When new generations have moved from one step to another, the excuses they have, we find them online quite often. And my concern is, how are we able to bring the word back to the people the way those 12 disciples, the 120, who actually believe when they were in the upper upper room. When they could see Christ and they understood him. Or when Paul eh, had this major change, eh, like the unplugging from the matrix. Remember the matrix we used to, we used to have after Mizizi? Now there's a new reloaded one that has just hit the market. I believe that this gathering that the DG instead of the LG 
is actually a good way of moving forward. But I'm worried about one small thing. If we use old words like the old wine skins to deliver the new message like the new wine skins. There are words that were, the church was accused of using. The patronizing. So that we can open up and my question would be how can we open up this word and package this word of God so that it really impacts when Jesus is speaking, it hits like it has hit several today. It hits everyone. And they get it at their point of need. Thank you. Wow. Thank you, Matthew. You know, I mean, these are such good questions, guys. And um, I, I promise that we'll, we'll actually get, get to them. We'll actually get to look at them. I'd like to end, because I know there are people traveling to Nairobi, and let's say it will be ending early so people can get transport, and also so you can rest and be here with expectation. Expect Somebody say expectation. expectation. Yeah, we can't out-hype God. I mean, he started already, but I just think that was just the start. Uh, it was just a start, and it was a powerful start. But Pentecost was just a beginning. It was just a beginning. After that, the signs and wonders continued. So tomorrow, um, we're going to be here, and we have expectation that what God is going to do is going to be amazing. Thank you for all of you. There are many people who came by 5.30 and were just walking around the dome and praying and just covering the place in prayer. I want to welcome you. If, you are, if you're awake early and the Lord wakes you up, and I'm praying that the Lord wakes you up, by the way. So if you feel a nudge at 3, don't, don't, don't try and go back to sleep. Just know the Lord is waking up to put on your makeup so you can come for prayer early. <laughs> the pastor has been praying for you. So come in, and uh, the guy, the team, if, if the sound team, whatever, set up early, so that by the time we come in, by 5.30, it's already ready. People can just walk around and start praying. And then 6 o'clock sharp, we jump in, and then we flow. We just flow. The Holy Spirit is in charge of the program, so we just flow with him and see where he takes us. Uh, tomorrow I'm expecting more people to come, so if you've got people in your DGs who are not here, just tell them you are missing out. You're missing out. Imagine if you're at work, if Pastor Milton had said he's too busy doing work, and then his leg was still short at work. <laughs> Sorry, Pastor Mills. You're my son. I can make fun of you. <laughs> and you'll be a foot what? <laughs> you'd be a footnote in history. <laughs> That's him, that's him, that's him. Pastor Kilonzi. <laughs> so, so, so just tell, tell your guys, be here, be here. The Holy Spirit is here. We can't out-hype him. There's going to be some just great expectation of what God is going to do. Um, thank you for all the great feedback, guys. I really believe God is doing something, isn't he? As you walk out today, your homework, just look for Kairos moments in conversations. Don't rush. Pray that God gives you discernment. Because that's, I believe discernment, by the way, is a primary, it's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a foundational spiritual gift. Because discernment is the one that allows you to know how to assign, to, to assign signs and miracles. That's, what, that's how you know what God is doing, so you can join Him in it. So pray for discernment. And as you're having conversations, from now on we regard no one in the flesh. Any conversation you're having, even if it's a joke, watch people. Listen to what God is doing. That's how you keep practicing His presence every day. And when you see something, you need to pull someone aside then do it and say, can I pray about that? I heard you say something. Let's just pause a moment and let's just pray. Or tell me more and let me just hear you out. Amen. All right, let me, uh, Pastor, any, who's doing announcements or anything? Hypsis? Pastor Hypsis? All right, there he comes. Let's give it up for Pastor Hypsis. <laughs>